If you thought freezing time to capture creative images like droplets of water in midair were only for professional photographers with expensive equipment, well think again. I'm going to show you how we can use a budget speed light, a budget trigger system, and an entry level DSLR to pull this off. I've always been interested in those images that capture droplets of water in midair. And many years ago, when I got into photography, I thought it had everything to do with the camera body and the shutter speed that comes with it. It wasn't too long before I discovered that it has very little to do with the camera body and everything to do with the speed light. Not too long ago, I created a video on flash photography, and I discussed how you can use the built-in flash, in addition, how you can use an external flash like this attached to the camera. Now when this is attached to the camera, you can use this and bounce lights off the walls, the ceilings, and you can leverage something called TTL, which is through the lens technology. And it allows the camera body to communicate with the flash so that a proper exposure can be made. Now, when you take the speed light and you take it off camera and you couple it with a trigger, you can capture some really awesome creative images just like droplets of water in midair, And that's really what we're gonna get into today. Now everything I'm gonna discuss, I'm gonna demo with this entry level DSLR. This is the Nikon D3400. It doesn't really matter what camera you have though, because what I'm gonna talk about can apply to any camera providing that you have a speed light of some sort. In addition, you're gonna need a trigger. Now this is just a budget speed light. There's nothing really special about this. You can use any speed light. This happens to be the newer 750 Mark II. Now I discussed this in one of my other videos and I can post a link below as to where you can get this from as well. But any speed light will do. So let's talk about the game plan. I feel it's important that you understand how the speed light works off camera. Because once you understand the concept of the power behind the light and using, using the manual properties on the speed light itself, some creative doors are really going to open up for you. So I'm going to spend just a little bit of time talking about that. I'm also going to spend some time talking about the manual settings you're going to want to use on your camera body. And it applies again to any camera that you may have because we're going to be in manual mode. I'm going to talk about the shutter speed, the aperture, and the ISO. And when I'm done with that, we're going to have some fun creating the demos. And the demos, I'm going to use some props that you see in front of me, like this wine glass over here. We're going to fill this about halfway with water, and then I'm going to take some of these props that I have right here, and we're going to drop this into the wine glass, and we're going to get the splash, and we're going to hopefully grab the image going into the water, and the water coming up and out, and I'm, I'm going to also get some. Uh, I'm going to also get creative with some other ideas, such as maybe a droplet coming off a faucet, or maybe using a spray bottle. You know, we'll see what we can come up with. But we're going to have some fun doing this. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump right in with the discussion. What's important to know about the speed light? To begin with, I want to start by discussing sync speed. Now, sync speed is the communication from your camera to the speed light, and it's the amount of time that it takes to make that happen. Now. Most speed lights have a sync speed of 1 200th of a second. That means that if you set your camera to something faster than 1 200th of a second, you're going to have a portion of the image that will be underexposed. It will not be exposed at all. And you can play with this. So if you get your speed light, go in at 1 400th of a second and see what happens. If I think to do this during the demo, I will. But what I expect to see is that half the picture, or a portion of the picture, will be darkened. It's going to be black and the other half uh, will be exposed based on the flash. So just in short, remember this when we get into off-camera speed lights that your shutter should be 1 200th of a second or slower. So that's important to understand. Now the other thing to note about the speed light is the power. So when we take this off the camera, we go into manual mode. TTL is not going to be an option here. So when we go into manual mode, what it looks like is this. So on the back right here, I don't know how well we can see this, but you'll see we have a manual option and we have the option to set power. Now this is set at 1 16th of the power. Now typical power ratings for a speed light are 1 to 1, 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 eighth, 1 16th, 1 32, and 1 over 64, and 1 over 128. Okay, so that's pretty standard with the speed lights. Now what's important about this? Obviously the lower you go, the less light that's going to be generated. But what else is important about it when we deal with 
freezing motion, and that is this. So when you go one to one, it's full power on the speed light, but it also means that the amount of action that you're gonna freeze at one full power, one stop, when it's 100%, is gonna be roughly one one thousandth of a second. Okay, so think about this for just a minute. One one thousandth of a second is what this will do. So this is a very important concept to understand. When you go to freeze motion with a speed light, the motion being frozen is not necessarily done by the camera at all because the shutter speed on the camera is going to be one two hundredth or slower. You could leave this open for a full second if you want. If the room is relatively dark and you have your settings set up right on the camera, we're going to talk about that in just a minute, your speed light will freeze that action. So to what extent? Again, if you're at full power, it's roughly one one thousandth of a second. Okay, and I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lay out all the stops and what they stop at. Maybe I'll do that in the description below. Just let me know if you want that. But just as a rough gauge, if you're at 1 16th of the power on this flash, you're going to freeze motion at roughly 1 11 thousandths of a second. Okay, 1 11 thousandths of a second. Now let's think about this. The fastest shutter this camera will go is 1 4 thousandths. Okay, so at 1 16th power on this speed light, you're at 1 11 thousandths of a second. That's going to stop all kinds of motion, right? And if you're at 1 128th of the power, right? So that is the lowest this, this uh, speed light will go. So it's 1 over 128. You are going to roughly stop motion at 1 41 thousandths of a second. Now that's fast enough to stop just about anything. The trade-off though is you won't have a lot of light at that power, okay? So for our demo here, I'm going to set this to about 1 16th of the power. So that's going to give us roughly 1 1, uh, 1 11 thousandths of a second to freeze action. It's going to be kind of cool. And so if you think about that, replay that if you need to because that's important that you understand how that works. And once you got that, you're going to realize that the shutter speed over here doesn't really matter. Okay? So Let's talk for uh, just a second about the settings on the camera. Again, regardless of the camera you have, you're going to go into manual mode on this. Okay, and when you do, uh, your ISO, you can drop that all the way down to 100 or 200. I just leave it at 100. Um, your shutter speed, again, is going to be relatively fixed at 1 200 of a second or slower. So it could be 1 1 60th of a second. I'm going to leave it at 1 200th. Okay, so that's going to remain static, ISO static. Then it comes uh, time to take a look at the aperture. Now, if you want a silhouetted background where it's, it's mainly dark in the background, you're going to want to take that aperture and move it up. Get up in the 20 range, maybe in the 30 range if you want. If you want a little more ambient light, take it down. Okay, so play around with that a little bit and you'll see what it does to the subject. So, with that said, again, on the camera that you have, doesn't matter what it is, it's Nikon D3400 that we're going to demo with, but your ISO at 100, shutter speed, 1 200th of a second, and your aperture, if you want it darker in the background, get the number higher. If you want a little more ambient light, take it down. When it comes to your flash right here, I'm going to start off at 1 16th of the power on it. And with all that said, we've talked about the settings. We're going to do some demo work here, and we're going to have a lot of fun. So let's go ahead and jump into setting up the demo. The first thing we want to do is fill our glass with some water. I have our glass filled with water right here, and my primary flash is on top of the tripod up here. Now I have it set up here because I want the flash to point down at an angle. It doesn't have to. This is my secondary flash, which I'm not going to use for any of the demonstrations. I just want to talk through a quick point, and that is this. You can position your speed light anywhere you want. You can position it off to the side just like this, or to the front or to the back. Something to think about is when you're shooting at a glass like this, that the glass is going to catch the light in some way. It's just the nature of what we're trying to do here. So in this case, if you put it off to the side, we're going to see the light appear on the left-hand side of the image. And to the front, likewise, it'll be to the front left side of the image. Now, with it coming down like this, I suspect that the light's going to travel through the water, and it's going to end up in the bottom right-hand corner, and it should be diffused just a little bit. Now, that's just what I'm going for, but you can do whatever you want to do, and it'll work just fine. 
something else to think about is this. What you want to do is take something, anything, and you want to put it center mass of the glass. So I use this second flash right here and just put the edge right in the center of the glass. I take my camera here and I focus right on the center. And when I'm done focusing, I recompose my camera to center up the shot on the glass. Now that means that we are dialed in on the focus to the center of the glass. And keeping in mind, I'm using back button focus. Now I created a video on that. I'm a big fan of it. I use it all the time. And this means that when we press down that shutter halfway, the camera will not try to regain focus. It's just going to snap the shot. And that's exactly what we want to do in a situation like this. So with that said, we are ready to get going. And how this is going to work is just like this. I'm going to turn the flash on. Okay, the flash is on and my camera is set up and again I'm dialed in on focus and we do have some lights on right here, but it's not going to make that much difference because my ISO is set to 100, shutter speeds at 1 200th of a second, and my aperture is at 22. Now if I get some ambient light, I can just dial that aperture up a little bit. So with all that said, let's jump right in, have some fun. Leaving on a midnight train Take me far away from me
I had a lot of fun making this video, and I'd like to add one quick note. If you're dropping things in water in a glass like I was doing, be sure to have a towel nearby because it can get wet and it's also helpful to wipe the glass down after you drop the object in the water. It just makes for a cleaner shot the next time around. Now keep in mind, I did all of this with an entry level DSLR, a budget speed light, and a budget trigger system. And I hope that this helped to inspire your creativity. And if it did, post a comment below and let me know what you're doing with the speed light. I'd be curious to know. So if this video helped you out, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so, subscribe to the channel. It's called The Real World. More often than not, I post videos about photography and technology, but I'll also post them about things that happen in the real world, such as automobile maintenance and homeownership. So until the next video, take care of yourself and be safe.